Hi, um, my name's Haldane, and I guess this must be my 15 minutes of fame. So uh, I'm going to make the most of it. Um, yeah, design with a conscience. Uh, uh, this is um, something I've been struggling with, uh, you know, for a long time, ever since I, I learned about design. Um, and I'd love to be able to stand on the stage and, and uh, pretend that everything I do is good. Uh, but it's simply not like that. And like this image reminds me is that uh, the path of conscience is not a straightforward path. It's filled with chaos and going between the dark and the light. So for me, the journey is this circumnavigation towards a center where I can find my true humanity. And uh, living in South Africa, it's, it's very hard to uh, ignore the pain and suffering that we are faced with on a daily basis, with the AIDS, the poverty, the crime, the violence, the addiction. It's in our face in this country. We can't avoid it. And so that leaves me as a designer you know, with a real strong question, how can I not design with a conscience and live here? My first uh, real attempt at designing with a conscience uh, was Zulu Mama. And like most of my work, it was exploring a new South African design language. You know, I studied in the early 90s, and uh, Nelson Mandela had his famous freedom speech on the parade across the road from where I was studying. And at the time, as an ignorant white young South African, I hardly knew who Nelson Mandela was. So for me, um, you know, searching and striving for a new national identity has been a very healing experience where I can learn about my country and embrace the, the diversity that we have here. Um, this chair uh, was very much inspired by um, my own inner search for the, the mother archetype. The mother archetype is very much lacking in our, in our Western culture. So I was wanting to create a cafe chair that embodied this mother archetype. And I felt that you know, when we go to the cafe for a tall whipped latte, it's really the universal mother that we're truly looking for. I began gathering uh, these, uh, these beautiful Southern African indigenous coil baskets, and they had this, the perfect form um, and this nurturing, gathering gesture, this very feminine gesture that I felt would be ideal to make a seat of a chair with. And then I uh, went up to Limpopo and I worked for about a week with this woman, Esther, uh, who had been taught uh, indigenous weaving techniques by her mother. And together, the two of us um, you know, transcended all our language and social and cultural, uh, you know, the huge gap between us. And we worked together with our hands and we, to create something beautiful. And this, this was a highlight in my career, this um, you know, meeting another person in my own country that has a completely different culture to my own and working with this person. And uh, the, I um, also evolved the indigenous craft by, by uh, deciding to use plastic, which is more durable than the traditional material of uh, Ilala palm, which is a very slow growing palm. So the, the plastic was more durable and could be used outdoors. Initially, as this picture represents, I, I was, my intention was to use recycled plastic from household waste. But the reality was when I started working with the plastic extrusion companies, they refused to extrude uh, with the recycled plastic pellets. They were worried that the bits of dirt and metal and things that still get left in the recycled plastic would damage their machines. So we compromised and um, we ended up recycling the factory's own in-house plastic waste, which was, was enormous and they were doing very little with it. The only compromise was that I was, was only really able to create black plastic but nevertheless, uh, black has proved to be the most popular color for the chair. And then this image is in the factory where they bend this, the stainless steel frames. So this chair very much is an integration of our first world technology that we have here, as well as our traditional craft. And you know, there aren't many countries in the world where we can do this, where we have both realities living side by side. And so my intention as a designer was to weave these two realities into one product. Although stainless steel is uh, the cleanest of steels and it's, it's made of 60% recycled material, um, it, it, is, it does still come from the Earth's crust and it is very high in embodied energy. So, you know, the, this is the struggle I have as a designer of, of making things, whatever I do, I'm going to have an impact and I'm slowly learning to make better choices uh, where I can reduce that impact. Because this is, this is a, a, a copper mine in Australia, and you can see the, the huge impact it has on our environment. And nevertheless, the Zulu Mama 
has proven to be successful, and perhaps it is because I've, I've tried to do this in a more responsible way than most chairs that are on the market. Here, the Zulumam is being used in a game lodge in Namibia. And here uh, is my distributor's exhibition stand at, at this year's Paris Maison Objets show. And the chairs has, has been accepted in Europe, and it's a, a great compliment for me as a South African designer. And our biggest challenge now is, is to meet the demand and to keep the quality up. So the, although this journey has been a, a long, difficult struggle, filled with compromise and contradictions, it's been deeply fulfilling for me to uh, take responsibility for how Zulu Mama touches the world, the unseen and the seen parts. And you know, I'm part of this world, and everything I do, I, I'm also doing to myself. The next project I'm going to talk about is, is New Slant. Um, it was a project uh, that I was invited to consult on by uh, Design in Darba. Lauren from the Design in Darba um, dreamt up the concept of bringing design and the disabled together. Uh, and so she invited me um, to design a, a, a furniture product for uh, a manufacturer called Carecraft who, who employ mostly um, people with epilepsy. A very humble, simple furniture workshop. And um, this, is, this was the market that uh, Carecraft were, were selling in, a very um, low-end pine uh, retail environment, um, which is very cost-driven, and you know, the cheaper, the better. Um, and I was hoping that through design, we could uh, create a new opportunity for Carecraft by raising their, their market profile. Although you know, the, the project uh, was really coming from uh, the perspective of it, it wasn't a typical project where we're designing for a client. We were designing to help the worker, not the client. So our first, project, our first step as designers was to decide um, or to identify a potential customer. So we, we came up with, or we identify the cultural creative as the ideal customer. It would be someone who reads Design in Daba, is interested in arts and culture, and has a passion um, you know, for, for doing the right thing in the world. We were inspired by uh, modularity and repetition, which are both production and inventory friendly principles. We were also inspired by magnetic toys uh, that create the um, possibility of building and uh, being flexible and having fun. And these were our early scribbles. Um, you know, it was very difficult to come up with something better than the box uh, for, for uh, creating a bookshelf. But I knew that the government wasn't going to be happy. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention that. The government was sponsoring this competition. Um, I knew that they wouldn't be happy if I came up with a super normal box. I ha I'd have to come up with something more than that. And, so, and I also didn't like the, the, you know, the, the pure linear box. Um, it, it was very boring, basically. And, so, um, and yet, those, uh, manufacturing straight lines is very easy and, and uh, cost-effective. So I needed to stay with straight lines, but, but add some movement to it somehow. So this is, we've, we've played with putting a slant on the box. And here we, we slant it in, the, in the 3D drawing. You can see we slant to the back and the front um, at a five degree angle. And uh, when we started putting this same identical box together, we were amazed at the different configurations that it could create. Um, you know, it was something uh, modular, linear, and yet it had this subtle organic um, undulation to it as well. And this idea of being able to create different patterns um, easily. Uh, Carecraft were already uh, using um, pine timber, uh, SA pine. Um, although it's not an indigenous uh, tree to South Africa, it is a sustainable resource. It's fast growing, commercially viable. And, um, and of course, trees are great because they do absorb carbon dioxide. And here you can see we explored many different ways of holding the boxes together, you know, bolts and straps, all the obvious solutions. And then we, came, we went back to the magnetic toy idea and uh, we, we sourced these my, my new uh, junior designer, Fritz, who's brilliant, I must tell everybody, um, he sourced these, these very strong magnets that, that we were able to hold the boxes together with. And that gave us the um, opportunity for flexibility and, and uh, being able to play. So here you can see four boxes together. And I like the idea of the magnets also reflecting um, the stakeholders of the project. You know, these different parties coming together, working on something and creating something greater than anything that uh, any of us could have done on our own. And here, the 16 boxes together, 
And we've just launched the new slants at the expo downstairs, so after, after this you can go and have a look and play with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm very proud of it, and I think we've done a great job in, uh, in creating a product that will, will support uh, the disabled in, in, uh, with, with the... Um, And my last project that I'll talk about is, is my latest one, uh, is Filler, it's a light. The last few months I've been going through quite a painful place in my life and I've really been needing light. Yeah, I've been really working at facing my shadow and embracing my light. And so, and, and this, this uh, I think this is the most important thing that we as designers can do, is, is take responsibility for our inner life, our soul life. After all, it's the artist's soul that touches the, our world. And so we need to take responsibility for what's going on in our soul. A few months ago, I was walking with my son in the, in the felt, and um, I was really touched by his, his joy and innocence at, at blowing dandelions, and just how that simple thing just really captured his, his imagination. So I wanted to create a light that um, had the same qualities as a dandelion, you know, the spherical form and something organic. And then a few months after that, I was mountain biking in a game reserve and I came across these white ostrich feathers and the light bulb switched on and I thought, wow, this would be an amazing uh, you know, diffuser for, for, for a light. This, and it has that, that beautiful airy quality of feathers and you know, it refers to angels and, and such associations. So I was very excited at, at using ostrich feathers. And also something you may, might have noticed with my work is that I'm always using local materials as much as possible. Um, and in that way, I, I can differentiate my, my work from, from everything that's imported. And that, this is my only way I've found to survive globalization as a designer in South Africa. Um, so yeah, making use of our na beautiful natural resources, but in a contemporary way. And also, um, you know, a lot of our resources are just exported raw. And, and I feel that it's my duty as a designer to uh, actually add value to our resources while it's still in the country and thereby, in a small way, I'm contributing to um, solving the problem of, of our, our huge 25% unemployment rate. And here the women are, are sorting the feathers into different grades and different sizes. And I was, yeah, here's the beginning of the light. I, I was very inspired by um, natural geometry. And so this was my, my uh, way of paying homage to the, the big creator up there. The light's um, diffuser is copied from the, the patterns of flower petals into a natural geometry shape. And this is the end product. It's called Phyllis of Featherlight, which is uh, named after a beautiful heartwarming book, a um, South African book called Phyllis of Kint, which is set in uh, the ost ostrich farming um, area of Oatsroom. And this is where these feathers come from. So the last thing I want to say is that I hope that this simple presentation um, might inspire all of you designers to find your conscience and uh, you know, make a difference and, and, find, and express your humanity through your work. Thanks.